Greetings, friends and colleagues. It's Sean Alvis. Ha <laughs> ha. Glad to see you guys. Short disclaimer here. Um, you know, some I've heard some people tell me, you know, who are you to tell me what God says? You know, are you some you think you're some kind of prophet up there on your high horse telling us what God says? Look, listen, I just go to this book and I read this book, the Holy Bible, and that is what gives me the big golden nuggets of truth, you know, and I'm just trying to share with you what God has given me, you know, I, and I can't give you a big giant golden nugget like this, you know, I can only give you uh, little bits and pieces, you know, because if you want the big golden nugget, you know, which I want you to have too, you got to go to the source, you got to open up the book and read it for yourself, and I encourage you to do that, but that being said, let's get into the video, so what am I talking about today? Today, I wanted to discuss the topic of putting women on a pedestal. Putting women on a pedestal, okay? Let me ask you a question. You know, who are you trying to impress? Are you trying to impress a woman? Are you trying to impress yourself? Who are you trying to impress in this world, okay? The reason I ask this is because, you know, many of us start our lives seeking to impress the opposite sex, right? So it's just natural. When we're younger, we want to impress the ladies, you know, and the ladies, they want to impress the guys, right? So, you know, women, how do they seek to impress men? Well, with their good looks, you know, and and, and their beauty. And, and, that, and you can see it as they, you know, they try to do their hair. They try to put on the makeup and do the nails and, and, and all that stuff to try to make themselves look prettier or whatever for their men. And, you know, men do the same thing, you know. Men, um, they try to um, impress women with money and power and strength, you know. And you can see men, you know, they, they try to impress women with, how look how strong I am, look how much money I have, look at this, this um, expensive car that I drive, you know, and things like that. So we grow up thinking that, you know, if we obtain this woman, right, this beautiful, young, voluptuous, good-looking woman, you know, that she's something valuable, you know, she's something worth fighting for and, 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 and dying for, and, and, and we do everything we can in our power to impress her so that we can obtain her, and then we'll do anything in our power to defend her and, 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 and keep her because we think she's valuable, and that's not to say that she's not, okay, um, but what I'm saying is this, you know, after she breaks your heart <laughs> or after maybe she didn't totally break your heart, but she lets you down in some way, um, she, in some way she doesn't live up to your expectation. Um, in other words, you, you come to under, the understanding that she's not all that, right? So you put her up on this pedestal and then she, she does something to um, discourage you or you know something that makes you say yeah I, maybe she's not as impressive as i thought she was you know you you realize that you you put her on this pedestal and after she hurts you you quickly kick her right off that pedestal right get her off there and and you may even tell yourself well i'm never putting a woman up there on that pedestal ever again never again because you learn that whoever's on that pedestal kind of controls you you know and they they can manipulate you and 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 you realize that if you put her on that pedestal she has like a power over you in a sense right and it, and it's not until you kick her off that pedestal that you realize that right and and there, there's a word for that in the community it's called simping right you ever heard of a simp that's what they're doing they're putting a woman on a pedestal in other words you know for example if you have a woman on a pedestal and she tells you um, to take out the garbage or, you know, for example, you go do it right away. No questions asked, right? Because you know that if you don't do it, if you don't impress her, if you don't, if you upset her in any way, she might not give you what you want, what you think that she has that you want, you know, what she has control over. You know, I noticed this in my own relationship with the woman that I loved. You know, at the beginning of the relationship, she had me on this pedestal, right? She would do anything for me. You know, I could ask her to do things and she'd gladly do it. And then, you know, after we dated for a while, a year or so, you know, or over the course of time, you know, it, you know, 
eventually, you know, we all do something wrong, you know, because none of us are perfect. You know, maybe I did something, you know, and I'm not going to get into specifics, but, you know, I'm not talking anything huge like cheating or anything like that, right? Like, you know, but, you know, little things like maybe I forgot to, you know, um, do something that I told her I'd do or, 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 or say hi or, you know, something, anything, you know. So inevitably... I did something to upset her or hurt her, and, and, and she kicked me off this pedestal, right? Because we're all human, you know? None of us are perfect. Eventually, you spend enough time with anybody, and they're going to hurt you, right? They're going to let you down. So, um, and, and by the way, I don't expect any of you guys, um, even you MGTOW guys in the community, to never let me down or to never hurt me, right? I don't have you guys on a pedestal. My point is, that after a while, she kicked me off this pedestal, which to me, it didn't really bother me because I never wanted to be up there in the first place, right? I never asked to be put on the pedestal. You know, she just put me there. Um, but when she kicked me off the pedestal, I think, you know, she replaced me with with herself, okay? Um, so... Now she has herself on this pedestal. So the reason I'm talking about this topic today is because I want to caution you guys, you know, because a lot of you guys are kicking these women off the pedestal and you're putting yourself on there, okay? You see, many many of us are hurt from how the women treated us. You know, we had them on this pedestal, they, they hurt us, and we kicked them off and said, never put a woman up there ever again. And you know, I agree with you. You should not have a woman on the pedestal. You know, but here's the thing. Whoever you put on that pedestal is going to have control over you. They're going to be able to manipulate you to get what they want. Because, you know, when you put a, when you put them on a pedestal, you're doing it because you're saying, hey, they have something that I want, right? So you put them on this pedestal and say, and you're like worshiping them, right? It, so that you get what they want. You don't want to upset them, right? Because... Like I said, the the reason men put women on a pedestal is because, you know, they want their beauty and their looks or something, right? So, it's same thing with women, you know, they'll put men on the pedestal because they want their money or their power, their resources. Now, I'm not saying that's a, a bad thing to, you know, for a man, for, for a woman to want a man's resources, but to put him on the pedestal, that's what we're going to focus in on, okay? The reason I'm discussing this is I want to warn you guys. I want to warn you guys that if you put anybody on that pedestal other than Jesus Christ, whoever's on that pedestal is going to fail you, including yourself. Including yourself. You know, the Bible says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. This is the first commandment in the Bible. It's, it's the most important commandment. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. So when you put somebody on a pedestal, what are you doing? You're idolizing them. You're idolizing them. You're saying, hey, you have something that I want that I can't get without you. You know, this person on the pedestal is in possession of something that you want. And it could be you on the pedestal. You know, you might be living to impress yourself. Let me explain. For example, when I first asked this girl out, right? My first, you know, the first time I approached her and asked her out. I didn't approach her because she had something I wanted. Okay, yeah, she was good looking, very good looking, dime piece, 10 out of 10, right? But my mentality, it wasn't, I'm going to please her. I'm not, I'm not going to bow down and do everything to please her, right? She wasn't on my pedestal. She never was there, you know? And, and granted, I'm not saying that I wasn't like a simp be before, you know? Like, I, I'm a little bit older in the game, and I, and I understood how the game worked by then, right? So I'm not saying that I haven't done that before, but what I'm saying is, you know, in this particular situation, I, you know, I didn't start off by putting her on a pedestal, right? My mentality wasn't to please her. She wasn't the person of in possession of something that I wanted, right? So when we were dating, yeah, I would take her out to fancy dinners. I would buy her a nice gifts, you know, but see, the difference is, you know, I wasn't doing these things to impress her because she was on a pedestal, you know. And I wasn't doing these things in order to receive something back from her, right? I was doing these things out of genuine love 
because the person who was on my pedestal, Jesus Christ, told me to love your neighbor, to love um, your neighbor as yourself, to treat others kindly, to be charitable, to take care of them, you know? So the reason I did these things for her was because God told me to do these things, you know? I was living to impress God, not her. You know, but I can see how she was living to impress me. And once she kicked me off the pedestal, it became now she's living to impress herself. And I was trying to direct her back towards God and say, hey, look, you had me on this pedestal. You kicked me off. Fine. But now you have yourself on the pedestal. You need to kick yourself off now and put Jesus Christ up there. That's who needs to be on your pedestal. That's my, the point of my message today. You see, the person on my pedestal is Jesus Christ. You know, I live to impress God. I was trying to show God, hey, I'm going to be kind to this woman and love this woman, protect this woman, provide for this woman because I love this woman because you told me to. I'm living to impress Jesus Christ. You know, my point here is this. If we put any human being on our pedestal, including ourselves, and you can do that. You can put yourself on a pedestal. You're going to let yourself down eventually because you, even you, don't know what's best for you all the time, right? You will let yourself down, okay? And if you put a woman on the pedestal, she doesn't always do what's best for you. Now, not to say that all oh, women are evil and things like that, but we're just human, you know, sometimes we get selfish, we get greedy. That's why we need to put God on that pedestal because he's not selfish. He's not greedy. He loves us. He's going to take care of us. He knows what's best for us. So we want to live to impress him. Okay, consider this. Many people who do not believe in God, you know, will say things like, well, I don't want to obey the commandments of God. I don't want to put him on a pedestal. I can't trust him. You know, because, you know, maybe they don't trust him because they can't see him. You know, they see a woman, they see what she has to offer, and they say, yeah, you know, um, I can see that. I can see what she has to offer, so I'll put her on a pedestal and maybe I'll get it, right? Maybe she'll give it to me, you know. But, you know, when you put God on that pedestal, it takes faith. It takes faith to believe that, you know, he's going to provide for you. He's going to take care of you, you know. In other words... People don't want to put their trust and faith in God because, you know, they don't believe that he'll deliver on his promise, even though God is the only one who deserves to be on that pedestal because he's always good. He always has our best interests at heart, you know. People want their reward in life right now, you know. I want it now, you know, and if you put God on that pedestal, you might have to wait for it. You might have to wait till the next life to get your reward, to get what you really want, right? That's why, you know... So they put people on a pedestal instead of God. And now, you know, because they put a human being on that pedestal um, that that they can touch and, and see, you know, that person has control over them. So you can see that, you know, the beauty that a woman has to offer a man, you know, might be something enticing for him here and now in this lifetime that he might say, you know what, I want to impress her because... I want that youth and beauty that she has to offer me, you know, and, and they want it so badly that they idolize this person and they put them on a pedestal. And, you know, sometimes it can blind you from reality that they don't have your best interest in mind. They're just manipulating you for selfish reasons, you know, and, and then they, they don't realize that their idol's not perfect. They're not God. You know, and, and they knock themselves, they, they knock them off the pedestal and put themselves on there instead. But here's the thing. If you, even if you put yourself on a pedestal, you know, you're going to eventually lay yourself down. Furthermore, you know, God has more to offer than any other human being on this earth has to offer, right? God is offering eternal life. He's offering peace. He's offering, um... To, to, to wipe away all your tears, take away your sorrows, take away your pain, your suffering. Can any other human do that? No. No other human can do that. So Jesus Christ will never lie to us. He'll never hurt us, you know. And 
So he's actually worthy of being put on a pedestal. But yet, you know, we as humans, as sinners, you know, we're not worthy to be up there. So, you know, a lot of guys turn from putting women on a pedestal and just put themselves on a pedestal. So what I'm saying is examine yourself. Who are you living to impress? Are you living to impress another woman? Are you living to impress yourself? Or are you living to impress God? Um, see, because what's, what's, what is really important to you? You got to dig deep and ask yourself, what's really important to me? You know, if all you think that's important is the things that you can gain right now, here in this world, in this lifetime, go right ahead. Put yourself up on a pedestal and, and you can be your own boss. You can, you can get what you want when you can think that you know what's best for you and you can go out there and, 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 and obtain it or seek to obtain it. And when you fail and when you fail yourself and realize that, oh, I, I turned myself in the wrong direction, then you have nobody to blame but yourself, you know? But, you know, at the end of this life, uh, when you die, you know, are you going to be able to raise yourself from the dead? Are you going to be able to take away your your uh, pain? Are you going to take away your suffering? You know, that's why, you know, I put my confidence in the Lord, because, you know, He promises something greater than anybody else on this world can offer, including myself. Not to mention the fact that he never lies. He's never going to hurt you, you know? So my point is, is, if you can't even trust yourself to know what's best for you, why are you even going to put yourself on a pedestal, you know? Put God on that pedestal. You know, basically, what, what I'm saying is this, you know, don't live to impress other people. If you live to impress other people, they're going to let you down. At some point in time, they're going to let you down. So why why give them that power to manipulate you? Why give them that power, you know? Because when you put them on a pedestal, it's like you're willing to do things um, that you would never do otherwise, you know? And they can manipulate you and use you and, and, take, and take from you and, you and you'd be blind to it because you have them on this pedestal, you know what I mean? And, and yeah, I know some people are afraid to put God up there because... They don't want to be used by God. But listen, God is not the enemy. It's us. It's man. It's humans. We're the, we're the screw-ups. <sighs> Myself included. You know, so don't live to impress me, you know. Don't live to impress yourself. Don't replace um, other people with yourself, you know. Put God up there. The only person you should have on that pedestal is Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus Christ is never going to let us down. He's never going to let us down. You know, I want to I want to read um, a short verse in the Bible for you. Um, uh, in the book of Galatians, chapter number one, verses ten. Let me let me open my Bible real quick. Galatians, chapter one, verse ten says, "For do I now persuade?" For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. You can't be the servant of God if you're living to impress men. You know? The Bible says you cannot serve two masters. For you for you will love one and hate the other or vice versa. You know what I mean? You can only have one person on that pedestal. You know? You, you you can put a woman up there and you can live to serve her. But if you live to serve her, you won't be serving Christ. You know, and, and you and you can and you can live to serve yourself and, and but if you live to serve yourself, you won't be serving Christ. You know, and I know it's hard. It's hard to make that uh decision to uh to serve God because it takes faith. You know, it takes faith because you can't always see what God has to offer. You know, you have to believe that God has eternal life to offer you. You have to believe that God has blessings and rewards waiting for you in the next lifetime after this. Because we can't take uh, things in this world after us. And, and and even if you were to attain that that beautiful, young, voluptuous woman or, or that handsome, strong, uh, um, um, wealthy man, eventually that's going to go away. At some point, you know, maybe, maybe eventually you die, you know, or, you know, her beauty fades away, you know, she gets older, like eventually 
that's going to go away. And then what are you going to be left with? You know, that's why I advocate to put God on your pedestal. Live to impress God. If you live to impress God and put Him on your pedestal, He won't fail you. And not only will He not fail you, but He has so much more to offer. He has eternal life to offer you. Okay, He has a home in heaven. He has a kingdom waiting for you. A perfect kingdom. And you know, I'm not going to go into the details of all that, but uh, my video is basically, look, not only should you not put women on a pedestal, but when you kick them off that pedestal, don't put yourself up there either. Okay? You know, put God up there. Because when you put God up there, you're going to live for the right reasons. You know? And and two people can do the same things. You know, you could have one man who's taking a woman out to a fancy dinner trying to impress her. And you could have another man taking a woman out to the same dinner but he's trying to impress God. And God says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. So even though these two guys are doing the same thing, they both took their girl out to the same restaurant. But one of them impressed God. One of them impressed God and God was pleased and God blessed that man. And the other one uh, was trying to impress this woman and he wasted everything because she had nothing to offer him. You know, or or maybe she did and he already got his reward and now it's gone. Or, you know, it's his reward is not eternal. His reward is just of this world right now. But God, he's got a reward for you that is everlasting. So when you, so when you impress him, he's going to give you something far greater than anybody else can give you here. And it's going to last forever. That's the treasure that you want. You don't want the fool's gold, golden nugget now. Hell with this. It's worthless. Go after the prize, the real prize. Anyway, that's my video. Um, I hope you learned something. And, I, and, and, and you know, the Lord's teaching me so much recently, I can't even keep up. That's why I'm saying you need to go to this book yourself and read this book for yourself because he teaches me so fast, I can't even share it all with you, okay? So go to the book, get your own golden nugget, get your own truth because you're going to need it to fight in this, in this world that's trying to bring you down and trick you, you know, and they're, and they're trying to offer you something that, that's fool's gold. They're trying to offer you fool's gold. I want you to go get the real gold. Put the, the real person in power on that pedestal and go impress them, you know? All right. Anyway, that's my video. I'm going to let God have the last word on this. And I love you guys. I hope you learned something. And, um, and be well. I'll see you soon. God bless. Um, Revelations chapter 4. Giving God the last word on this. Revelation chapter 4 verses... 11, verse 11, says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. Amen. God bless.